you aren't familiar with the story or the parable of the prodigal son, it's a story about a young man who grew up on a farm alongside his father and his older brother. And Jesus begins this tale by getting right to the point that the younger brother isn't happy. He's discontent, he's grown restless, living a life that he's always known, and he's about to make a radical decision. The young man decides to leave his father and his brother and take off for a new city and a new life. It's a bold decision, but before he breaks the news to his family, he makes an even bolder and darker decision. Listen to what Jesus says in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 12. He said, he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. And so he divided his wealth between them. We, we learn in the first two sentences of the parable that not only did the young man inform his father that he was leaving home for a new life, but incredibly, before he left, he asked his dad if he could have his share of the inheritance. And think about how painful that must have been for his father. It would have been hurtful enough for the young man to just say, Dad, I'm leaving, but he doesn't stop there. He tells his dad he wants an early payout of his inheritance. The hurt and the pain that the father must have felt in that moment will be the discussion of another session, but it brings us to an all-important question. What would bring the son to make such a shocking request of his father? What was the internal dialogue occurring in the heart and the mind of this young man that led him to have such disregard for his relationship with his dad? Well, if you're anything like me, when, when you read the story of the prodigal son, you, you rush past this important question in order to move quickly to the end of the story where we see one of uh, the greatest pictures in the Bible of God's grace. But in doing so, we miss one of the most crucial questions that helps us get to the heart of this story. Why did the younger brother choose to leave in the first place? While Jesus is not explicit in describing the younger brother's motivation, to me, there seems to be only one logical conclusion, that somewhere along the way in this young man's story, his eyes started looking toward the horizon, and he saw the bright lights of the city in the distance. In the mundane daily routine of his life on the farm, a question started creeping up from deep within his heart. It's a question that um, I talked about in the first session, and it's one that lurks in many of our own hearts right now as we, we watch this video. Is there a better life out there that I'm completely missing out on by staying here in this place being obedient to God? For the prodigal, at some point, the internal questioning resolved into an answer. The young man concludes that the answer must be yes, that there must be a better life waiting for him outside of his father's house. And so he decides to act. He summons the courage, approaches his father, and asks for the cash. And incredibly, his father agrees. So with a suitcase full of money, he, he takes off on his own to a new city unhindered by the, the chains of the only life he'd ever known. One of the things that's important for us to get to the bottom of is why does the prodigal and why do we start to ask those questions in the first place? I mean, seriously, if life with God is so good and so satisfying, then why in the world are we tempted to leave him for what we think are greener pastures? Well, part of the answer is our flesh. We're made of it. And for the most part, our flesh is, is pretty stupid. We're constantly longing for things that God said we shouldn't have or experience. But the other answer is a little more hidden. While it's true that you and I fall into sin because of our own fleshly desires, Jesus tells us there's another source that causes us to question if life's best is found in obedience to God, and his name is Satan. For us to get to the bottom of how Satan works in our lives, I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever been lied to? Most of us have, and it hurts. When I was a senior in high school, I was actually dating a girl that was a sophomore in college. And one day before Halloween, she called me and invited me to come to her school and go to her sorority's uh, Halloween costume party. And she informed me that everybody there was gonna be in costume and that she had a special request. She wanted to go as Tinkerbell and she wanted me to go as Peter Pan. And I don't know what I thought about that. So I started asking her about the costume, what would that entail? And she told me, you know, there's gonna be a little feather cap and she probably wanted me to wear green tights. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I informed her, I, I'm a senior in high school, and you want me to go to a college party wearing green tights? And she's like, yes, everybody will be in costume. It'll be great. Everybody think you're so secure in your manlyhood. And so stupidly, I said yes, and 
drove up there, got in the Peter Pan costume, great tights at all, walked into the party. I kid you not, I walked in and I was the only man in the room wearing a costume. And not only was I wearing a costume, but I was wearing green tights and a Peter Pan outfit. I looked at her and I said, hey, I thought you told me everybody was going to be in a costume. And she said, well, it was actually costume optional, but I didn't really want to tell you that because I was afraid you wouldn't do it. And so true story, I walked out the door and that was the end of our relationship. Now, after lots of counseling and therapy, I can look back on that night and I can laugh. But here's the reality of it all is I would have never made that decision if I had known the truth. I made a dumb decision that night for one reason. Somebody told me a lie and I believed it. And so that brings us back to Satan. The scripture teaches us that besides our natural sinful desires, one of the primary reasons we choose to disobey God is because of Satan himself. And so if we know sin is wrong, how does Satan get us to choose the path of sin? It's simple. He lies to us. And instead of believing God, we believe him. And then we go out and make some monumentally stupid decisions. Listen to how Jesus describes Satan. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature for he is a liar and the father of lies. So what Jesus wanted you and me to know is that Satan, by his very nature, is a liar. So if something is coming out of Satan's mouth, we can pretty much take to the bank that he's lying. And though Jesus never mentioned Satan as a character in the parable of the prodigal son, his influence is evident. If you listen closely, you can hear the whisper of the father of lies in the young man's ear. Hey, you're you're really missing out by living here with your dad. Don't don't you think life would be more fulfilling if you live by your own rules and on your own terms? You see that big city over there? That's where real life is happening. You should go get the money that belongs to you and go find out for yourself. In the first words of the story, Jesus tells us that the young man did exactly that. In Luke 15, 12, Jesus said, the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. And so he divided his wealth between them. The prodigal son has been told a lie. And he's become convinced that there's a better life that's awaiting him outside of his father's home. And he acts. In some ways, it was an innocent mistake. Just like all of us, he he wanted happiness. And he became convinced that happiness could be found somewhere other than where he was. But what we're gonna see in the coming sessions is this one decision is gonna bring a destruction to his life and to his soul that he could have never foreseen. You see, Satan never tells us about the consequences of trying to find happiness outside of God's love. He always paints a rosy picture of sin. He makes it look like it's going to be pleasurable and fun, but conveniently leaves out the fact that the Bible paints a much different picture of sin. Satan tells us that sin is going to equal fun and pleasure and joy, but God's word says that sin equals death every single time. And when you think about it, Every single time you stand at the crossroads of sin and obedience, you're ultimately making a decision. Am I gonna believe God and what God says is best? Am I gonna believe the lie of Satan that there's a better life for me outside of God's love? The result of that decision will ultimately make the difference between you finding real happiness or real misery.